Coming up, as the initial payments for Boris Johnson's flat refurbishment could yet see him face criminal charges, we look back over the last year of Tory sleaze and corruption. From PPE contracts awarded to Tory cronies above market rates, to the more recent corruption allegations swirling around Pretty Patel. And we'll also review the recent successes of Jolyon Maugham and the Good Law Project, who seem to be the only people holding this dishonest, law-breaking and corrupt government to account. Keep watching. If you enjoy these videos, please click the like button, subscribe and get notified of new releases every Wednesday and Saturday. The Electoral Commission think there are reasonable grounds to suspect that an offence or offences may have occurred, as it appears Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson accepted a financial loan or donation to pay for the £200,000 cost of renovating his Downing Street flat and then tried to cover this up. Just think about that for a moment. The taxpayer provides any new Prime Minister with a £30,000 grant to do up the flat to their tastes, but this was nowhere near enough for Johnson's lavish tastes. 200k just to furnish a flat that you'll be in for at most long months, short years. Mind you, even long months staring at this monstrosity would drive anyone insane. Your right-wing press say no big deal, nothing to see here, it's a private matter. But when someone is gifting the Prime Minister £200,000, the public has the right to know who it is and why they're donating it. Political commentators are saying it's quite possible that the Electoral Commission will refer this matter to the police and that criminal charges could be brought. For all Johnson's sins, the tens of thousands of needless Covid deaths, the screwing over of Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe, the spaffed billions on the dodgy test, track and trace programme, and yet Johnson's eventual downfall could be over a roll of £800 wallpaper and a tasteless sofa. Almost Capone-esque, isn't it? But this is not the only legal problem about to bite Johnson in the arse. The Good Law Project has obtained leaked documents showing irregularities in the sourcing of PPE equipment going back to the start of the pandemic. Last July, they issued proceedings in the High Court against Michael Gove, and these proceedings are now coming to fruition, leaving Johnson with a lot of questions to answer too. It looks like there's been breaches of procurement law and obvious bias in contracts being awarded to associates of Gove and the Tory party. Some contracts handled by Gove, such as one for £840,000 for testing the effectiveness of the government's coronavirus messaging, were awarded with zero competition, no advertising of the opportunity and no official notices of the awarding of the contract being published. That particular contract, by the way, went to a company owned by husband and wife James Frayne and Rachel Wolfe. Frayne was previously Gove's Director of Communications and Wolfe was awarded a half million pound contract back in 2010 to promote free schools. That never made it to competitive tender either. This is the sort of stuff you'd associate with a banana republic, isn't it? But it gets worse. The Good Law Project is fighting for openness on several other fronts, including a £108 million contract, which the government's legal defence team is now claiming was only for £32 million, for surgical gowns awarded to a pest control company called Pestfix, with listed net assets of only £18,000. 16,000 other companies were bidding for that same contract, so why did the government choose Pestfix? And they had to advance 75% of the money up front to Pestfix, who were sourcing the gowns from China but didn't have the assets to pay for them. This breaks the government's own rules when awarding contracts, but I'm sure every viewer of this channel suspects that the government breaks its own rules with impunity on a daily basis. And those gowns, by the way, took months to be delivered at a time when frontline health and social care workers were dying because of a lack of PPE. They could have awarded those contracts to one of several British manufacturers at a cheaper price and with quicker delivery. Obviously, those British manufacturers hadn't donated enough money to the Tory party. Simple as that. Journalist George Monbiot has given plenty of other examples of apparent Tory corruption in the area of PPE, including the employment agency with net assets of £623 that was awarded an £18 million government contract to supply face masks. The confectionery wholesaler that the Good Law Project alleges was given a £100 million contract to supply PPE. 
and there was another £250 million contract for protective medical equipment channeled through a so-called family office registered in Mauritius which specialises in currency trading, offshore property and private equity. I mean, why? I'd really like to know and I'm sure you would too. One final example I'll give, and the most recent, is the two published pharmaceuticals direct contracts for PPE, totalling over £131 million, where the Good Law Project have discovered that Home Secretary Priti Patel intervened to help middlemen win these contracts. One of those middlemen was her friend and Tory councillor, Samir Jassal, and the other was a Serbjit Shergil, whose company's assets went from £200 to £10 million in the past year. Oh, and those contracts were above average market price. Surprise, surprise. Oh, and it wasn't just Pretty Patel. The Good Law Project apparently hold evidence of other cabinet ministers who swung these lucrative contracts towards Jassal and Shergill. In the past year or so, Billions and billions of taxpayers' money has been spaffed on dodgy COVID-related contracts awarded to Tory associates and donors by this mafia-like cabal in Westminster. But your typical voter just doesn't seem to give a toss. What we have to figure out between us is why is that? I hear things from neighbours and business owners down here in the West Country like, oh, politicians are all as bad as each other, or the government's doing its best. Or, you can only see these problems in hindsight. And each one of those statements is utterly and completely wrong. There are decent politicians in Westminster that put people before profit. My own personal list would be people like Caroline Lucas, Stuart Hosey, Zara Sultana, dare I say, at the risk of offending some viewers, even Ian Blackford and Jess Phillips, Yvette Cooper, Angela Rayner, Rebecca Long-Bailey, Hilary Benn, Stella Creasy, Maybe even some Tories. Well, I can't seem to think of any offhand. You may not agree with the politics of those MPs I've just listed, but they are all decent, principled, caring people who provide a contrast to Johnson's corrupt and incompetent cabinet. And the government hasn't been doing its best. It's been maximising the financial rewards for its associates and donors at the cost of human lives. And Johnson himself didn't even bother attending the first few emergency government COBRA meetings on the pandemic. He was swanning around, off on holiday half the time, spending his time shagging around while his then wife was being treated for cancer, then getting divorced, ended up in impregnating Carrie Antoinette and helping her pick out gold leaf wallpaper. Doing their best, you're having a laugh, aren't you? And this hindsight thing. Believe me, honestly, I'm no Keir Starmer fanboy by any means. What a disappointment he's been, to be honest. But come on, give the guy some credit. At every stage of the pandemic, he's been one step ahead of this ridiculous government on lockdowns, furlough, closing the borders, etc, etc. If the government had acted as he suggested at each stage of the pandemic, I'm certain there would have been tens of thousands fewer COVID deaths. The Tories tried to troll him with the nickname Captain Hindsight. But Captain Foresight is far more accurate. And just to finish today with this thought, the outrage that I feel about the billions wasted by this government during the pandemic is not about value for money. And by the way, isn't it funny how we hear nothing on this from the right-wing Taxpayers Alliance? It's about transparency and competitive tendering as a defence against corruption. But this government seems set on just being brazen about this sleaze, knowing the electorate either don't care or will forget about it in a few days when the next scandal comes along. They don't expect ever to be held to account. I wish the Good Law Project every success in making sure they are. <laughs>